I think an interesting conference because of uh, many aspects. So it's an event, a one day event um, about e-commerce search and uh, it takes place right after Berlin Buzzwords. So you might have heard about this conference. Um, and uh, it's a funny name, like double plural of mouse. And uh, the idea is uh, mixing from two aspects. So one is uh, we mix um, people with different backgrounds. So whoever works in e-commerce search um, can join or who is an enthusiast uh, in this area. And um, so that means from product owners, data scientists, UX designers, developers, and so on, search relevance engineers. And the other aspect of mixing is it's the format. So in the morning, it's a boring old conference, like single track talks, question answers. And in the afternoon, it turns into a bar camp. And uh, this is uh, a very um, interactive uh, format. And uh, so if you have an itch for e-commerce search, please do come uh, and meet your peers. Yeah, so <laughs> normally it takes place in June. It should be June 16th next year. But let's talk about um, Quirky. Um, so Quirky uh, came to life um, and is normally and very often used in a context where a team uh, migrates from a commercial search solution to an open source solution. Uh, let's migrate our search to open source. And the reason behind that often is, oh, we want to scale better than the commercial solution, or we want to have more control, own our search, understand it better, uh, be able to improve the quality, implement our own models, learn to rank, and get this specific advantage over our competitor who could license the commercial software as well. And uh, also, we don't have to depend on the uh, service provider on, on updates, we do it ourselves. And uh, it's also easy to find developers who have this skill. Yeah, if you Google for developers with Elasticsearch or Solar skills, you find many more than let's say those who have Igolia or uh, Fred Hopper or whatever the search engine is skill. On the other hand, this comes at a price. Uh, so to even get on par with the commercial solution in this migration, uh, that's a big investment. It can take up for uh, up to a year uh, before you get on par with it uh, to reach the same quality, given that this was reasonably well tuned. And that's quite an investment. And uh, some features are not even available in uh, e-commerce search. And uh, so you have to invest into it and um, um, uh, before you can come to the things you really want to do. Yeah. So. Um, this is the context and uh, Kirky tries to help um, uh, bridging this gap. And uh, in the beginning of this year, uh, we started a new initiative that's called Chorus. So if you go to Kirky.org, you will also find a reference to Chorus. Um, so Chorus is this idea uh, of um, speeding up this development. If you set up a um, e-commerce search, you don't have to invent everything from scratch. You know, a lot of this is boilerplate, but still you have to do it, implement it yourself. And uh, it's like a template application. So it's a Docker container. For now, it comes with a Solar. There are plans to do it with Elasticsearch as well. It gives you a black light uh, UI. Um, and uh, then we have Quirky and Smui, the two components on the top right, um, to help you with search management. I'll come back to search management in a bit. And then uh, we also um, integrate tools like uh, RRE, uh, Rated Ranking Evaluator. So that's a tool to measure things like NDCG. So metrics um, uh, of your, um, uh, for your offline testing. Cupid, a tool to collect judgments. So you can ask someone, okay, given this query, this search result, is it a one, two, three, four, five? And then I can use this to optimize the search offline. And Querite, uh, this is a bit experimental. So that's a framework um, to find the optimal parameters for your, uh, let's say, field weights uh, using a genetic algorithm. Yeah, so this is a tool stack. And this is a tool stack we want to integrate. And I would say uh, probably Solar is the oldest component here. And Quirky and Smui uh, are the second uh, oldest. So um, I have to. 
Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's look at the history of Kirky. Um, so Kirky came into life already six years ago in a project for Galleria Kaufhof. Um, um, so they are uh, a very large uh, German department store chain. They're struggling at the moment with COVID. Um, and at the time, um, we were in a migration scenario and the question was, that, so they migrated the entire platform and the question was, uh, which uh, search engine should we use? Uh, so a commercial search engine like Fact, Fact Find or Fred Hopper or Solar. So the team had more knowledge in Solar than Elasticsearch. So uh, we looked at the pros and cons and then we found uh, a lot of um, things where it was easy to get on par with the um, commercial search engine Fact Finder that they previously used. And, um, but the one thing that was the most difficult was a tool to manage uh, search at the query level. So a UI to manage synonyms and to apply synonyms properly. And also a UI uh, that would give me um, um, uh, a way to boost certain results. If they concern this, uh, if they contain this term, they should be boosted to the top or brought further down the result list and other tools for pre-processing the query. Um, I want to demonstrate this idea of search management so, um, and, and you can interrupt me while I speak, um, just to mention it. So uh, basically this is the demo app in, um, in, in Chorus. So uh, I seem to be, I seem to miss a, a few uh, images here, but you get the idea. So the query is notebook and um, I'm getting very, um, or uh, I get results that are somehow related to notebook but I get spare parts like the battery, a lot of accessories. Yeah, so like the case and so on. And this is a typical problem in e-commerce search. And uh, so the accessory problem. And in a commercial search engine, uh, you would go to a backend where you could say, oh, I manage, this is this specific query. So let's say the queries notebook. And uh, I create rules for this and I would say, um, let's say I, I need an insight here. So let's say uh, if it contains spare part, I want to bring it down. Yeah. So um, what I would do then is I would say, uh, bring down by a certain degree, uh, everything that contains spare part. And I save this and I push this in this case to solar because it's, uh, of course, it takes a bit, it's maybe because my machine is at its limits. Uh, it should be there, there it is. And um, then if I search again, look at this specific one. So this is not quirky, which is so slow, it's this black line UI. <laughs> um, so we should see the results now. So we get the messenger case in the beginning. So this is not really good, uh, but it's changed. And what we could do probably is apply a specific insight and say, oh, I bring up something, all the laptops contain AMD or Intel uh, lab, uh, um, uh, processors. So then I could say, oh, I have a certain number of up rules and say uh, Intel. And uh, I save, I push this. And um, so when it is there, is it there? Pushing, pushing, pushing. If you could hear the fan of my laptop, you would know that uh, it's at its limits. So I start maybe too many services. Um, and I think it's this Docker. And you see, this looks more like a proper search result for a notebook. And um, if you go to e-commerce search, and this is not only a case there, but there's very imminent. Um, so this is how, they, how search managers work. Often it's a, uh, it's a role in a search team in e-commerce search, someone who goes to the, to the underperforming queries with reasonable traffic and then tries to manage them. And uh, other things you would do is uh, apply synonyms or apply uh, filters. So sometimes you don't want to show certain things in the context of a given query. Uh, it's not just about the relevance in terms of, okay, is this a notebook or not? could also be something like, I want to promote a brand if that's the curb, because I have a, um, a contract with a supplier to promote that brand. So that's, that would be a typical case. 
So in this case here, uh, you saw this UI. So that's SMUI. So SMUI is a UI uh, that allows you to maintain the rules and then it's pushed to Solar and um, um, then Quirky uses this, these rules. So uh, it's two different things. So one is the UI and the other thing is the Quirky library that uh, uses those, those rules. Um, so the UI is not available in Elasticsearch yet, I have to say this, uh, but we feel a certain pressure to, to do it. And uh, it's um, not a big change, but uh, basically we're waiting for a sponsor that it makes it to his roadmap, so to say. Um, but um, I think uh, you get the idea. Um, so um, coming back to the original uh, um, problem, um, so out of the box, Solar Elasticsearch would not allow us to do this. Yeah, so there is no way to um, maintain or to even implement the bonus in Malos. Yeah, and Malos even got worse um, when uh, we no longer could apply negative uh, boosts. Yeah, so um, uh, so uh, it's hard to implement, and uh, so there was a need for this. And also query dependent filters, we don't have this. And uh, there have always been issues with uh, query time synonyms um, and uh, uh, versus fields, for instance, um, and there was no UI. So this was our starting point at the time. And our approach then was, okay, let's do the query pre-processing in a library that's quirky, and then the UI should follow later. So in this initial project uh, back in 2014, uh, this was a proprietary uh, UI and now SMUI is this open source library. Um, so I've already started my talk a bit, but that's the agenda, so to say. So uh, I started a bit with a, a history and we'll give you a few more facts. Um, then uh, talk a bit about Solar and uh, then Kirk for Elasticsearch, of course. Um, then dive a bit deeper into query rewriting to tune relevance. And then uh, the question is, uh, so how does it interact with the the scene uh, information retrieval models. So when it comes to field weighting and the language model uh, that uses document frequencies and boostings. So uh, how does that work? So uh, a few more facts. It's written in Java. Uh, it's under Apache 2 license, so easy to incorporate or easy to use. Um, if you need uh, one place where you get all these tools, you go to Quirky Org. So all the chorus, MUI, Quirky, um, uh, uh, things uh, are being mentioned there and documented. The GitHub repo for Elasticsearch is uh, uh, github.com, Quirky, Quirky Elasticsearch. And um, uh, Quirky is a group on uh, GitHub uh, under which you find the repos for all these uh, projects. Um, so what does it do? So I said, it's the library that does this query rewriting. And uh, over time we realized it also makes building the query easier. And we see that I think this is especially true for Elasticsearch. We see this in a bit. Um, and uh, our approach was to, uh, to have a core that's search engine independent, and that makes it easy to have a version for Elasticsearch and for Solar. So the rewriting itself is being done search engine independently. And then we have an integration for Solar and then uh, uh, one for Elasticsearch and we started with Solar at the time. So I've mentioned we started back in 2014 to fill in this gap. And um, so uh, we've put on uh, this slide uh, a number of uh, logos from the companies that use it. I don't know how much they are known uh, on the other side of the, the Atlantic. Um, uh, I think Walmart Labs uh, rings a bell. In this case, it's Asta, so Groceries in the UK. Uh, Otto basically is the uh, biggest uh, online retailer uh, uh, in Europe after Amazon. Um, then uh, Media Max Saturn, biggest electronics retailer, and so on. So what you can see here is it's a lot of traffic that goes through um, uh, Quirky. Uh, these companies here, they are all um, uh, e-commerce company, but companies, but we've seen uh, Quirky being used uh, outside e-commerce as well. Uh, but we have the most use cases, I think, uh, in e-commerce search and the, and the most installations. The Elasticsearch plugin came into life uh, and uh, or was first released in 2019. I admit uh, I 
Otis uh, had spoken at a meetup in, in Washington back in 2017 and said, oh, it will uh, be released shortly. And uh, it didn't happen because uh, there were issues with caching. And so then we did a complete rewrite uh, and it was released last year and it's being used in production uh, with reasonable traffic. So that's the installation we, we know of. Um, and we get about 450 downloads a month. Uh, so that's a lot less than for the solar plugin, but then it's a lot younger. So uh, it's catching up. And um, the um, uh, versions that are covered, it started with 7.0 and, and 7.10, the latest. Uh, I don't know whether 10.0 is the latest, but I think it's pretty up to date. All right. Um, so why uh, so, uh, quirky for Elasticsearch, same as for solar, probably search management capabilities. And then... Um, uh, also, the query DSL of Elasticsearch pushes a lot of query processing, in many cases, outside the search engine. And I would say, if I see a picture of an architecture and someone asks me whether the, of a search architecture, whether this is solar or Elasticsearch, I could tell in many cases uh, that this is probably Elasticsearch because there's a lot of pre-processing -pre done outside Elasticsearch. Yeah? And uh, I come to this right now. So one of the uh, cases that I see a lot is, uh, so let's imagine a query like Samsung Notebooks. And uh, what we want to have is something that says, oh, I search Samsung in the brand field and in the product type field. I mean, as humans, we know um, that uh, it's a brand, but when we search, we don't know. Yeah, so we don't have this intelligence. So we say, okay, either uh, Samsung is a brand or a product type and the same for Notebook. Yeah, and we would say, uh, or either we match one of these here and then we, we match one of these here. Yeah, so, um, so what uh, 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 Elasticsearch creates for a multi-match query then is um, a query where it searches for um, uh, Samsung notebooks, both in the brand field or both in the product type field. Yeah, so regardless of what strategy we are use, even if you use cross fields, uh, it builds such a query here. And this won't match because Samsung um, is a brand, but Notebox is not. And Samsung is not a product type. And the reason for this is under the hood in Elasticsearch um, that if the two fields use different analyzers, um, it would create a query like this. Yeah? So it would say, even if it's cross fields, if the analyzers are different, uh, I give up. I don't know how to handle this. Um, then uh, I do this thing here. Yeah? And this basically is something we, we don't want. Uh, we want more or less this on the left-hand side. And what uh, many developers do then is they split the query outside Elasticsearch and then they say, um, oh, I, I search brand in, in these two fields. Uh, I, sorry, I search Samsung in these two fields, brand or product type. And then I search a notebook in these two fields. Um, so, and then combine them with a Boolean and yeah, so uh, there is a push towards the outside. Yeah, so I, I do this query building outside, so I have to inspect the query outside Elasticsearch. And once I open that door, uh, they start creating synonyms or query normalization outside Elasticsearch. And so uh, I've seen query pre-processing services outside Elasticsearch, um, which is a huge uh, thing in the architecture. When we look at Quirky, um, so Quirky gives you a query builder. So there's a Quirky query type. And uh, what we say is, okay, so there's a certain structure here. So we have a match matching query and then the query string, that's basically Samsung notebook. And then we specify the query fields like product and product type, and then it builds the query that we want. Yeah, so um, that's, that's pretty easy. And this is basically taking the approach that we know from Solar to Elasticsearch. Uh, and the solar approach for Quirky was informed by the solar Edis Max query parser. And then uh, we see this later, we can apply rewriters per request uh, so that we can uh, create a huge request uh, for the Quirky query builder query type. Uh, but I want to point out this one thing here. So even if you're not interested in rewriting your query, uh, building a query uh, is also easy in Quirky. And uh, so the idea is instead of uh, pushing work to you uh, and, and do things in the application or in a specific service to rewrite the query, 
um, Kirky tries to do this for you inside the search engine as a plugin, and uh, you have a slim query that you send uh, to Elasticsearch. So I want to demo Quirky a bit more deeply. Um, let me think of my examples. <laughs> so uh, I have a, um, an index um, that uh, is not the same like I just demoed in, uh, the, uh, in this uh, front end that uses blacklight, but it's also electronics and it uses IceCAT data. Uh, so it's a data provider. So the data is not exactly what you would have in a shop but uh, it's more like um, uh, product sheets, data sheets, but overall, I think it, it serves the purpose. And uh, I'm going to explain the query in a moment, but you can see here, uh, I have a query string here, notebook, and that's the search results that don't look that good. So we have the spare part problem, the accessories problem again. And uh, I wanna point out how I built this query. So basically I say, okay, um, uh, I have the, um, uh, the quirky query type, the quirky query builder that I just showed in my slides. And then uh, we have um, uh, the matching query. So we have a uh, in, in quirky a structure that says I have a matching query and further down, uh, I have something about boosting. Uh, and in between I have rewriters and I have certain properties that apply to all of them. Yeah? So there's a structure. If you want to go deep into this, I refer you to the quirky um, documentation. So there are a lot of knobs that you can uh, tune. And in this case, uh, I replace or I put in the query string from down here. So this is Python. So it's, it's a quasi uh, JSON format, uh, but it's basically a Python object. Uh, I find this very handy. So if I search, so that's basically what I did. So I search and, and get these results. And now I want to improve uh, these results. And the idea is to use um, uh, uh, query rewriters. So in this case, let's do the same thing. Uh, let's push certain documents to the top that contain AMD and, and those that contain Intel. Um, so <clears throat> the way I define a rewriter in Elasticsearch is I have a REST API. So basically this is uh, uh, after underscore quirky rewriter. And then I have a rewriter name. This is something I can freely define. So I, um, uh, this rewriter that I'm going to show is the common rules rewriter. So it's the common demo, that's the name I choose. And this is basically the configuration here. So this is um, pretty slim. So I have to provide a rewriter class. You can even plug in your own rewriter class and, and manipulate the model. And uh, then it has a configuration and uh, ignore case even as the default, I would, I didn't need to give this. And here is where I put in my rules in a specific syntax. And uh, here in this case, in my Python code, it's a reference to this field. So I can type in the rule here. And I say, if my query is notebook, uh, I say, okay, uh, I want to bring up uh, by a certain factor all the AMD, uh, all those documents that contain AMD and also those uh, that contain Intel. Yeah, so I upload this. So you see, it's quite fast. It's not like the other one. So um, now if I run this again, I must specify my rewriter. Yeah, so that's the rewriter that I've just um, supplied. So basically under this property rewriters, uh, I have a list of uh, rewriters so, or rewriter names. So that's my rewrite chain. And this chain references um, those rewriters that I've just defined. So I've, I've run this again and I get the proper notebooks. Yeah, so I think this is, um, this is quite, uh, quite nice. Uh, I wanna show uh, two other rewriters or two further rewriters. So, um, or I should use a, a laptop for, sorry, I should show a synonym at least. So let's search for synonyms. I only get 16 results. So what this means is um, I'm missing out on the synonym. I should say, if the query is laptop, uh, also find notebooks. And uh, so I could say, I have to create something uh, like this and uh, give you a synonym rule and that would be notebook. Uh, I upload this and um, then um, I should get something. Did I forget something? I uploaded it. Do I have a typo? No. 
Uh, oh, where's the problem? I don't know. <laughs> Why doesn't it work? Did I run this? This is very unusual. Uh, synonym notebook. Did it deploy? Yes. Laptop. Laptop. Let me try to remove it and see what happens. Let me try the notebook query again. I think I've made a mistake somewhere. So notebook still works. If I comment this out, sorry for this, has never happened before. <laughs> I mean, plot. Okay, so now let's do the other way around. If I search for a notebook, can I find the laptops? Uh, Synonym laptop. So, so upload. So this is eight eight nine in the end twenty seven eight eight nine. So this way round it works. Why shouldn't it work the other way around? So let's try again. Uh, so I have to laptop. So, please, if it doesn't work, I have to skip it. No, I don't know what the problem is, so I have to, to inspect it. Um, so it should work. And uh, what we don't have is bi-directional synonyms. So normally uh, we use a tool like SMUI to generate both. So we would say um, in, uh, uh, in SMUI, um, use, uh, use it in both directions. Uh, and, and create both routes here and surnames in both directions. But this is really strange that uh, I couldn't get this. Very strange. Um, I have to see the query later on. Uh, this way it works. I don't know what it is. All right. Um, so I want to show another example uh, and, uh, and other rewriters. Um, no, before I do this, uh, I want to show a few more rules or rule types. So what I've uh, shown you is uh, to you is um, that we have this input and then the structure is normally uh, um, apply the rules that follow that input. And um, uh, the input can be marked as exact. In this case, you would use these uh, boundary markers that are quotation marks. Um, and you can say, oh, I want to match this at the beginning or at the end only. Uh, so, and you can have a placeholder at the end that says, oh, I want to split sofa bed, and then uh, I pick up um, the, the second part. So everything that starts in sofa um, could be split off here. So that's a strategy interesting for some languages. So synonym rules would normally work <laughs> in, uh, uh, with multi-term input. I come back to this in a bit. Um, Up-down rules, I've demoed them. Filter rules, so we could say, if that's the input, um, then filter out everything that contains Apple, or filter out that everything um, that um, uh, does, oh, I only want to have things, sorry, filter so that Apple is contained or filter so that case is not contained. And I can use um, a query in the syntax of the search engine. So I can, uh, if I prefix this little star, I can say, oh, I uh, can create an elastic search query that's more complex. I can do this for the filter query and for the up, down boostings. I can delete query terms. So uh, many, many different types of rules. So this is just one rewriter in a chain of rewriters. And um, maybe because of time, I come back to the other rewriters when you have the a more complete picture. So, um, um, so what I've shown you is uh, the most common use case and the most um, important motivation for Quirky to have those rules, but it's much more powerful. And let's look a bit under the hood of Quirky. So what we have is the user enters a string 
And then we pass the string into an object model. And this is a quirky specific object model. So it's nothing to do with the scene at this level. And then we have a chain of rewriters uh, that manipulate uh, that query. And we've seen the one of the rewriters, the common rules rewriter. Yeah? So the one that applies the rules and uh, it manipulates this um, uh, object model. Um, and then when we are done rewriting, uh, we create a Lucene query. That's the query to be run. And um, so then we need to plug it in. So in Solar, we would use a Solar query parser. And uh, so uh, the plugin means something that controls it and gives access to the outer world, like to uh, request parameters and so on. So as you can see for here, it's we have a core that's independent of any search engine. It's, that's quirky core. Then we have a level that's Lucene, and then we have a level that's search engine specific. And we just flip these two. Yeah? So Solar and Elasticsearch, the difference is just these, these two thingies here. So that's why we can say uh, the core is pretty mature, yeah? even if it's Elasticsearch. Um, Elasticsearch has been around for a year, uh, quirky for Elasticsearch, but the core is uh, search engine uh, independent and um, uh, pretty uh, well uh, matured. Okay, I wanna say a few words, but maybe not in that detail. So the query pass is very simplistic uh, um, and um, um, a very uh, reduced syntax, but you can still plug in your own query parser. Yeah? So this is not a query parser or a query builder in the Elasticsearch sense, but um, a query parser in the sense of Quirky that takes the string and uh, turns it into this object model. And then we have this, this rewrite chain and I've shown you one rewriter and uh, oh, sorry, we have this, this object model. So the object model is very similar to Lucene's, but it's not Lucene. And uh, then we have the rewriters. And uh, I want to show you a few other rewriters. So you can see it's a chain. So they are applied in their order. So the output of one is the input of the next. And I hope my demo works now. So uh, what I want to show is um, two more rewriters. So let's say we have a word like wall mount. and uh, we can write it either as one word or as two words. So there's a bit of variation. And if you look at the search results for the uh, compound writing, we get uh, one hit. And for the writing with the space, we get two. Yeah. So what would we do? Um, so how can we split this um, uh, programmatically? Yeah. So we don't want to configure rules. If this is the input, that's a compound. Please split this. Um, we want something more systematically. And for this, we have the common rules rewriter. Uh, sorry, we have the, uh, the word break compound rewriter. So it's a bit of a mouthful, but it does a lot of things. Um, so uh, I think I have a slide uh, that describes it a bit. Um, so this word break rewriter, so this is uh, what we see here. Uh, it splits the words uh, based on a dictionary and the dictionary is a field in your index. So you would copy the contents of other fields to this field, normally called dictionary field. And then the word break rewriter will look into that field and try to split the input at every letter and see whether we have the two words there. So let's say we have in this um, dictionary field grain and we have free, then it would say, oh, I can split grain free into grain and free. Yeah, and the nice thing is, if we look back at our diagram, this happens before we turn it into a Lucene query. So this happens before uh, we go to the fields. Yeah, so that means we can search and grain in one field and free in the other field. It doesn't make much sense for this example, but let's say it's something like, uh, uh, we have this a lot in German, like leather jacket. So leather, it would be a compound, leather would be the material field and jacket would be the product type field. So it makes sense to split this beforehand. And the next example is from Dutch. Uh, so for for Honden means uh, food for dogs, hounds. And uh, what it can do is you can say, oh, this is a trigger word. And uh, the trigger word uh, causes something like, okay, I copy the input or I create a compound that takes the second word as the last word and the first word uh, left to this uh, trigger word as the, the head, uh, so to say, as the last word. So we create four for Honden, Honden four. Yeah, so we create the compound, 
So if someone searches for food for dogs, it finds dog food as a compound. Um, and then the latest thing is um, uh, in a language like German, um, we have something like uh, uh, cases where this strategy would not work. So the compound here is Arbeitsjacke. So that means uh, Arbeit is uh, work or labor and jack uh, jacket, uh, Jacke is jacket. So, but if you use the strategy that we would try to split at every position, uh, we wouldn't get the two words. Yeah, so that's the two words that we want, but then we wouldn't get it here and we wouldn't get it here because of this S. So German has a lot of strategies to create compounds. It's not just um, uh, the juxtaposition of the two words, it's uh, creating a, spe uh, a specific form of this modifier word. Yeah? And it's not a grammatical form that would be used otherwise. So there's no word in German that would be a grammatic form like Arbeits uh, would not exist in German. It's only used in compounds. And uh, the rewriter here, if we turn on this morphology thing and say the morphology is German, then uh, it would try to apply like 20 patterns um, to see whether it can split um, the, the word, uh, the query word. So I want to show this. So let's come back to uh, our configuration. So I define uh, a rewriter. Um, and uh, so basically I say, oh, that's my dictionary field. And I have copied contents from other fields into this. And uh, then in my query, uh, I need to use this rewriter. So let's say uh, I, I use the word break rewriter uh, before my uh, common demo. Um, and then run this query wall mount again. So I get 63 results. So uh, I, I split this one as well. Yeah, so, um, uh, so basically a wall mount now written together matches as many as if I wrote them separately. Yeah, I do remember one of the spellings only had one match. I think it was the one, this one. So um, we can do this before we go to all the other rules. Yeah, so we can do this in the beginning of our rewrite chain. So I think that's, that's a, a very useful thing. And it's good to do this before going to the fields. I want to show one more example, uh, one more rewriter notebook bag. Uh, so why don't I notebook? So um, let's say I want the orange notebook bag at the top. Yeah, so I go back to my common rules that hopefully work now um, and say, if my query is notebook bag, uh, notebook bag, I want to bring up uh, by a certain factor that contains orange. Yeah, so upload. Um, and so this is the second. If my rules apply, they do. I get um, uh, the, the, the orange back to the top. Now what could happen is I have two rules that contain notebook. So one for the laptops oh, and, and I want Intel and AMD at the top. And uh, if I have a uh, notebook bag, I want to have orange at the top. And what could happen is that we see a lot of typos. Yeah? So if someone did not enter notebook, but say the person entered notebook yeah? or notebook with one O or something. So at the moment we wouldn't get anything. Um, but then we have a rewriter that's the so-called replace rewriter. So the replace rewriter normalizes inputs. Yeah, so we have these two inputs here that are misspelled. Uh, we could also use patterns here and say, this is the normalized form of it. Yeah, I think I've already deployed it. Um, and if I enable this rewriter before going to my rules, um, so that's the replace rewriter, uh, then uh, I get not book back, yeah. So it's mistyped, and I still get uh, the orange to the top. Yeah. So um, I think this is quite handy because then I only I, I separate the concerns. I normalize the spelling in one place, and then maintain the rules in a different place. Yeah. So um, you get the idea. So there's a lot of benefit in uh, having this chain and having the flexibility to do whatever you want in your rewriters. Um, I'm skipping a bit of the rewriters, just want to mention number unit. Uh, number unit um, is a rewriter that interprets numbers and units like 15 inch. And I can map this to a field 
and uh, to arrange. And that means uh, it would uh, find 15 inch laptops. They normally are 15 point something. And um, so I, I say, I, I want this range. But the ones that are the closest to my original input will be boosted to the top. Yeah, so this is what this, this rewriter does. And I can do this for multiple fields. All right. Um, so there was a question uh, when we started about um, the, the synonyms. And uh, so this is when we get also get to um, uh, creating the Lucene query. Let me first start with the Lucene query. So uh, in this case, um, uh, we have uh, a query like genes. And this is uh, then finally in the Lucene query search across fields. Yeah, so the rewriting happens without fields. That makes it a lot easier. And uh, then uh, we search it in the fields. And uh, this is uh, basically uh, how it's done. Yeah, so we do everything before uh, we, we create the Lucene query. And then when it comes to synonyms, um, uh, so in this case, we have a multi-term input and a single term output. So how do we deal with it? And the way Quirky handles it is, it um, adds the tokens to the original clauses. That means repeating them. But the Boolean logic is the same. Yeah? So we would say, if this is a Boolean and, um, we would still match either if it's personal computer or if it's uh, a, a PC. Um, and um, this is quite useful, this approach. So the alternative approach would be, to have a common root up here and then have the two terms uh, as a sister node to this Boolean query here. And uh, this makes it uh, a lot more complicated if you handle multi-term queries. Using this approach here, we can handle multi-term input, multi-term output. You would just try to go to the original clauses. Of course, if it's a single input clause in the multi-term output, we would split it. So then we would have a sister node. Um, to this uh, original clause, but the sister node would just be here. Yeah? So if you have a multi-term synonym to computer, uh, we would have a Boolean query under this, jun this junction maximization query here. And using this approach, we can even handle overlapping multi-term input synonyms. So we have a query ABC and a synonym for AB and a synonym for BC. We would just um, uh, fill in the synonyms to those slots, so to say. And uh, this is only possible because we are not using the analysis chain. Yeah, so in the analysis chain, this would not be possible to you know, find the, the right place. Uh, but doing this without the analysis chain, use a proper query object model, and then uh, this approach to deal with Boolean logic, I think that's the, um, the thing that saves us here. OK, um, so uh, one thing I want to mention is um, scores. Uh, so let's say we add those synonyms, how should the uh, matches that match the original term and the matches that match the um, synonym term be scored. So this was in the very old solar wiki, uh, something that said, okay, please don't use query time synonyms because there might be an issue. And uh, I skipped the other uh, um, questions here. So let's uh, use this document frequency um, uh, problem. Um, as an example, to see how, how Quirky deals with uh, scoring. So um, let's say even without synonyms, we have this case of genes again, where the input term is genes, and then we search it across fields like title, brand, and color. And uh, this is a real life example. So this was the first uh, uh, match, the first document that came up, and this was very crazy. And uh, the problem was that uh, someone had put into the color field uh, the term genes yeah, for some reason. So they, they saw, oh, this looks like genes. Yeah? So you can always say it's messy data, but it um, demonstrates the problem. And the reason is there was only one document with document frequency equals one that has genes. And uh, if we use the inverse document frequency as a factor for our scoring, uh, this will get a very, very high score. Yeah? And the other uh, fields had uh, much higher document frequencies for genes and the inverse then would be much lower. What Quirky then does is it fakes the document frequencies. So for everything that comes on the, the top level clause um, or the top level node here in this query, it would look what's the highest document frequency here and then uh, apply this document frequency to all the terms here. This is similar to what the uh, 
um, synonym query at solar level does. Um, in Kirk, we take it one step further. So if this is a complex query, let's say under this node here, we suddenly have a Boolean query that splits into two more clauses, like denim trousers. I don't know whether that makes sense. Uh, we would um, fake the document frequency for everything um, under this node for the entire branch here. Yeah, so uh, we get rid of this issue with the document frequency wherever these term terms come from. So this is the original term and this is the synonym term and uh, we equal out those, those issues. And uh, you can turn this behavior on and off. So we say uh, it's the similarity scoring uh, uh, property uh, at query time. Um, DFC stands for document frequency correction. So that's what you just saw, that's the default. You can say um, we turn it completely off the scoring. So then it's just a Boolean match one or zero, or we turn it on. So that will be the default behavior in Elasticsearch um, score by even the screwed uh, uh, document frequencies. Last thing that I want to mention, I know I'm <laughs> rushing through this. Um, so uh, this is uh, a quite a nice addition that has come in, uh, pro been provided by the Walmart Labs guys or from Asta. Uh, so what they wanted is, I want to filter rules and sort rules at query time. And what you can do is you can add properties, tags to uh, the rules. Yeah, so like in this case, we have a priority property and uh, you can see it here as well. And this is like a little JSON document. Yeah? Even if it's written separately, we can say, oh, the whole thing here is a JSON document. And then you can use a JSON path syntax to um, uh, either filter the rules or sort the rules and then say, I only want the first rule. Yeah? So, uh, we can, so this is a case we have a, a rule for notebook and a rule for notebook back. And the rule for notebook downgrades everything that contains back doesn't make much sense if uh, it also matches if the query is notebook back, so they would be contradictory. But what we could do is we could say, uh, we sort the rules by priority and say uh, the highest priority with the greatest value um, uh, will be sorted first. And uh, so in this case, sort by priority descending and then say we limit it to just one rule. We, we only take the first level of priority. So in this case, we would only apply this one if they both match the input. Yeah, so um, that's one way of doing it. And then here you see, uh, we could also filter by priority. Um, another approach could be filter by tenant or filter by language so that you can pass a parameter to Quirky and um, then uh, manipulate how the rules are applied, uh, whether they are applied and how they are ordered and filtered. Okay, what's next uh, for Elasticsearch rewriter logging. So uh, we wanna tell the outer world uh, that a rewriter was applied. Uh, so this can be very handy for tracking or maybe an external re-ranking service wants to know has this query been man uh, managed by a manual search manager by a person then I don't wanna re-rank it uh, using learning to rank maybe. Uh, that's a bit tricky in Elasticsearch because you cannot really add something to the search result but we might uh, be using query names for this. And then definitely the UI for Elasticsearch so that uh, a search manager can easily manipulate those, those rules. All right, that's it, thank you. Awesome, thank you so much, Renee. Um, if there are any questions, folks, please feel free to either come off mute or post them in the chat and I can read them out. Sure, I'll, I'll jump in. Uh, so first, very, very nice presentation, quite like the detail, uh, definitely lots of good uses for, for Quirky. Um, I am wondering if you have any support for span queries. Uh, so one of the, the use cases we have is we yeah. search for a company name like Apple Inc. Uh, also synonyms apply to the Inc. portion of that, right, for Apple, Apple Incorporated and of course yeah. a whole lot of other synonyms. And yeah. we look for proximity of that particular company to a list of terms uh, that the user defines and you can say what well, you know proximity of 15 25 50 terms yeah <clears throat> so at the moment the the object model in Quirk is not capable of expressing a phrase um, 
but it has come up a number of times. <laughs> um, and um, so uh, if you go to the Kirky core repo, uh, only recently someone from, from SoundCloud has brought this up. Um, and um, um, I would say for, for e-commerce search, we didn't really need it. Yeah, so we, we wanted it the other way around. So more term centric. Uh, sure, so what, sure. Yep. What you suggest is more phrase centric. It might be a, tri a bit tricky, especially um, if you want to apply a synonym to the phrase. Um, and also the scoring, if you think about uh, DF, document frequency of a phrase, uh, and then how would you score it? Would you take the frequency of the uh, rarer or more frequent term? So th that's, um, uh, um, it can be tricky, but the will is there. <laughs> Let me put it like this. <laughs> Yep. And um, I think what we will be starting with is uh, producing phrase queries. Yeah, so maybe the rewriters need not consume the, free, uh, the phrase queries, but you should be able to produce phrase queries. Uh, so either as a synonym, so like in the case you mentioned, so there should be a proximity, um, or there should be, uh, or even for the, for the original um, uh, input, um, we always go to term centric, but you might want to have something more field centric. Um, for the letter, for um, uh, dealing with the original um, query to handle it as a phrase, there is a bit of a, um, I should I say, solace. Um, so if we look at the, at my example here. Uh, so uh, where's the query? Um, further down here. So what you can do is uh, you can say, I want to boost uh, documents that contain the query as a phrase. Yeah? So um, either the full query, so you would say, uh, if my query, let's say is ABC, um, I boost everything that contains ABC as a phrase in the title field or as a phrase in the name field with these factors and I can provide a slop. Yeah? So that I can say it need not be the exact phrase. There could be something in between. And you could also say, say um, uh, maybe it's not the, the entire uh, uh, query, uh, but maybe I have pairwise matches. Like in ABC, I boost AB and I boost BC yeah, in these fields. And last but not least, I could also boost trigrams. Yeah? So if it's ABCD, yeah, I could boost also ABC and BCD. Yeah? So um, for the input, it's there somehow as a boosting at least. Uh, but not for the output as uh, a result of a synonym. Okay, sure. Thank you. Any other questions from folks? Right. The other question that usually comes up, is it fast enough? <laughs> um, so yes, uh, so uh, we have people who have um, like um, tens of thousands of rules. Um, and um, to look up the rule is very fast. So it's basically an automaton um, that finds the rule and it's all cached in memory. Um, the one thing that can make it slow is if you say, that's my input and I apply 30 synonym rules, and then the 30 synonym rules uh, are rewritten into, uh, uh, or, or uh, are tried to be matched in five fields. Yeah, so that makes uh, 30 times five. So you end up with 150 clauses. So normally this is a, a data smell. Yeah, so um, what we get is something like someone searches for um, sports, and then uh, someone uh, does something like, okay, I search for jumpers, trainers, um, shoes, uh, pants, whatever, <laughs> uh, uh, and then has a filter, but the category is sports. Yeah, so uh, basically you have a, a problem there in this case. Um, so it, it's probably a data uh, problem then. So uh, that should be avoided. Yeah. 